All right, Cole Heads, welcome to the center of the Cornhole Universe. I am Finn, the loudmouth for the ACO. Right next to me, the Mississippi Ninja, Philip Bar. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is not Philip Barnett. This is Philly Rainier. A little surprise for you tonight. We're going to start out tonight with our women's player of the season here for season 17, the American Cornhole Organization World Championships of Cornhole. I know you just recently arrived here in Branson, Missouri, and uh, you got out of the car. Your clothes shrink wrapped around you in 104 <laughs> degree heat. It sure did. But it feels good in here, and it's going to look really good out here on center court in just right. a couple of minutes. Can't wait. All right, so we've got women's player of the season action coming your way. We're going to roll to juniors and then seniors before all is said and done. Philly nice enough to sit in with me and tell me a little bit and give us all a little bit of insight as to these two players who are getting ready to face off on center court who are all standing right now with the one and only Rich Pyle. Hi guys, thanks for coming up. This is the ACL World's Season 17 Championship. Right now we've got two ladies that are battling out for Women's Player of the Season. All right, let's hear it for Amber Fretwell, she's in the red lane. <laughs> so Rich is introducing Amber Fretwell. <laughs> Amber uh, fighting for the state of Alabama. Maggie, of course, fighting for the state of Wisconsin for Cheeseheads one and all. Frank Gears gives them the final signal for the last down and back. No pressure whatsoever here with Amber playing out of the red lane. The lower seed, Maggie, the higher seed, number one and number two respectively, and we'll find out who will be our women's player of the season. So talk to me a little bit. You're, 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 you're kind of fresh to the ACO. This is your first world championships. You drove in from St. Louis about four hours, got here today. What, give me a sense of the vibe and, and what you're expecting based on the season that you've had and what you're looking at here at the Worlds. Uh, expecting for myself or just overall? Just I think both, a little overall. bit of both, yeah. I think it's going to be a great week Week in general. I mean, uh, we're excited. I mean, my wife and I both are really excited. I am excited to see what this whole week is going to bring. Also, the nerves are there, too, as this being our first Worlds, but everything is pretty good. Right on. Well, I'll tell you what. These two uh, women who are out on center court right now, they've had quite a season between them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight women's championships. And, uh, and honestly... Uh, Maggie did a lot of this. I, I always joke that she should have been playing doubles because she was <laughs> pregnant most of the season with her daughter, Anna, her newborn. And so uh, she has maintained that level of play that we've come to expect from her that earned her that nickname, Machine Gun. But Amber Fretwell is my pick to win Queen of Cornhole. I think she'll be our first ever singles champion this year. She is. I mean, they both are on fire. I mean, I've played them both this year, and they are no joke. They're beasts on on the board, I mean, but amazing off the board too. Yeah. So just great people surrounded by uh, by by great uh, family and friends when they come out. <laughs> All right, they've been given the command to bring it, and we will have our women's player of the season game underway. That first bag is going to be launched, and I say launched by Maggie because she takes that rare two steps. When she and she throws the bag further than you're even required to, based on the way that she has to to make that step. By contrast, Amber pretty much just kind of sets and lets it go. But again, we've talked about this, and you've seen this out on the boards in the in the main play area. 500 players, 500 different ways to throw the bag. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of different ways. Now the style, which whose style do would you say you probably are closest to? Are you a stepper or do you stand stand tight? I stand tight, so I probably more familiar with uh, how Amber throws. I stand close to the board. Mm -hmm. oh, now, and, and and you do see as she just did there, she stepped out trying to I think take to the left side of the hole and no blood there taken in the in the first frame and. So that bag, that first bag is held by the higher seed there, Maggie Geiger. She's put one up and a little bit out of play, and so Amber has an opportunity to take advantage, which she does. But you got to figure that no matter how long you've been throwing out there during the course of the day, nerves do take over when you get to the center court. Oh, most definitely it does. And let me see if, when was it, you You just recently, you recently won uh, your first purple jersey. Am I am I correct? Where were we? Was that Cedar uh, Rapids? It was Cedar Rapids, it yeah, co-ed. 
in co-ed, and uh, that was a lot of fun, and that was the, oh, what a great oh. shot. What a nice shot. And that's uh, Maggie's nice enough to go ahead and post that deuce up for Amber, and she's going to work her way back down to collect her bags. But uh, that was that was exciting, and that's when we realized that, you know, when we did the post-game interview, your enthusiasm for the sport was really, uh, you know, some of the highest we had ever seen. <laughs> so that's exciting to see from a new player and a new member of the ACO family for sure. Oh, I thank you for that because I felt like uh, it was a big whirlwind for me, and I was like, I think I'm just talking to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to my world. <laughs> that's that's the on my business card. I might change my title. I'm just talking to talk. <laughs> But it is, uh, it's always fun to get out and watch this kind of competition. And Maggie clearly having a tough time dialing in the center. And Amber does her a favor there, at least, by, to save her a couple of points. But, uh, you know, you know damn well that she is going to find her groove. And that 2 to nothing is going to open up a little bit more, but she'll find her groove. And uh, she is uh, one of those players that's that sort of that silent assassin. She's very quietly going to look over, look at the score. She sees it 6 nothing. She's lost that first bag advantage, but the next thing you know, it could be 13 to 6. Are you more comfortable throwing a first bag? What's your, as you watch the, the way that they play, and we're not seeing a lot of defensive strategy at this point. Honestly, I think it depends on how far in the bracket I am and if I'm on main stage or not. I think the nerves get the better of me definitely on main court. I think I would rather follow, but... I mean, I think it just depends on games. Sure, absolutely. Everything is situational. Now, this is a best two of three, so even if Maggie takes a moment to get her get her feet under her here and she's down 9 nothing, it's going to be a best two out of three scenario. Now, we are going to get to a small bracket play when we get to the seniors division here, and ultimately that's going to be a lot of really good matches back-to-back-to-back to back to back right there. So uh, we're looking at a... An interesting start to this one, and again, Amber, I did not pick her to win the women's division. I picked her to win the whole tournament, so uh, I wanted to take a little bit of pressure off because I know she hangs on my every prediction. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you are, and you are, but uh, she and her husband Shane play together and uh, are a formidable team when they step up together. I know. we. I've, d I've played them in co-ed before. They are fierce. Mm -hmm. They definitely are. And interesting, normally they're wearing that uh, those red and gold and yellow firebrand sort of jerseys. She's in the, a little cooler, nicely moved in there. Taters exchange with that kind of that much cooler uh, jersey there. Fretwell, number 22. And their little ones are here, too, and they're starting to wing the bags 27 feet and then some. So they're a, I, I believe I was uh, beaten by young Fretwell and his 9-year-old partner. Uh, we were beaten 21 to 20, Alan Massey and myself. So... Uh, that's the, and you see him sitting over there, the mm -hmm. family in their jerseys, watching mom as she steps up. Baggy, Maggie's able to crack the uh, goose egg, and she puts two on the board and takes that first bag back, which is nice. That one's still gettable on the back side of the hole. And this is where I will turn to you or to Philip as a player, you know, and, 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 and ask you what, in a situation like that, that bag, every time a board hits the bag, it loosens it up just a little bit. Is that gettable? Or is that a gettable bag for you? I think it is. And if you see it move every time, you might mm. get lucky enough for every time that bag hits the board, it loosens it up. And then maybe an airmail. But, I mean, if it pinches up like that too. Well, and I think Maggie did herself a disservice there because not only did she not get the, uh, the drag, to pull it back in with her she did pinch it up a little bit and then that mm -hmm. last bag that amber threw even when it hit the board as hard as it did really didn't uh didn't have an opportunity to be affected by that at all but uh, amber amber has a very deliberate ar deliberate arm swing um i i just i i marvel at that two steps i don't have the coordination to take two steps <laughs> to throw a bag like that i really i'd fall over i think but she has so much, there's so much extra energy spent to do that, but her stamina is always, always top-notch. Amber's going to step way out there to the left to try to get around and get up and in oh, there. Boy, they got she almost a does. little laundry basket built up around the hole right there. Two bags left in hand, one on the way. And <laughs> it's, there, is, there is one sliver. If she threw this thing sideways, it might be able to fit, but she's going to go in low and hard, stack Ooh. them up. <laughs> Maggie says, I mean, what am I going to do with that? 
Oh, up and over, and nah, she's just content to say no blood, no foul on that one right there. And they both very quietly go down to gather things up. I don't like. I, I know you guys don't like picking things up off. The, you like to reach down through yeah. that hole and grab the grab the bag out of there. So picking them up off the top is a little unsatisfying. But if there's no harm done, no, they're all canceled. I mean, just brush it off and go to the next round. You know, I, I, I talked a lot about this. People are saying, you know, do you play? And I say, yeah, I'm starting to play and take it a little bit more seriously. But the big thing for me, I always equate it to golf. I said, now you've got players that have, just like golf clubs, oh, there's an interesting shot there that certainly one puts. Fell. You know, one fell down underneath for Amber, but it also puts her in a position to come up over the top. And this last bag, you now Maggie went ahead and did it for her to clean that up. But she's going to have to be careful coming in the front side. There you go. Maggie should be able to get this one if she get is she able to get enough on it. But mm -hmm. now, again, as you said, no harm, no foul. But you know, players come in now with eight or nine different sets of bags. I don't know how many you play with, knowing the conditions of the board, humidity factors, slow, quick, whatever. But very much to me like golf in a number of reasons. Yeah, I we honestly we only have a couple sets and we stick with our vipers mainly. Actually, a couple of our vi vipers are they're s slow and faster than each other. It's kind of weird that way. But you have it, you know, like like anything, you have the right tool for the job. And uh, the other thing that I always tell people too, the key to this game is no matter what you do on any given shot, forget about it. Mm -hmm. If you had a, if you throw a really good bag, forget about it. If you throw a really bad bag, forget. And that's so hard to do. It is. I know when I play, oh, I ooh, thought I play. I try to brush anything off that I did well or or not so more so not so because that can really stick with you. Mm. Boy, and there's one I think Maggie thought she had that. She was going to be able to spin that bag and it grab the corner. It almost wrapped around. It almost did. It almost did. But that uh, it was enough to move the board just a touch, so they straightened things up. Maggie points uh, to the score holio board, adds a penny, so 11 on three in this best of three series for player of the season. Maggie takes that first bag back after having scored the point. And again, if you're new to Cornhole, AmericanCornhole.com, all the official rules, regulations, all the officially sanctioned Information about the game and the sport of cornhole is available for you there. Again, AmericanCornhole.com. Cancellation scoring, as you probably know, one on the board, three for in the hole. It's pretty simple stuff. Yeah, just get the bag in the hole. That's Nothing it. too hard That's about all that, right? Do, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your secret strategy? Oh, I don't know. Put the bag in the hole. But uh, – Oh, and there's a there's a great opportunity right there to turn a three into a seven, and that's a rare four spot right there given up. But as we said, very, very methodical, very quietly. She gets back in there, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, by day a school teacher, so very patient is Maggie Geiger. I think uh, Amber's uh, retying one of her shoes, clearly the issue for her on that last frame. Anything little sometimes can mess with you. Yeah, like maybe that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not so little right there. But these it's interesting, these boards here on center court, because there is no humidity in this room right now. The AC is cranking, and uh, if you get one low and there's nothing to stop it, it is going to fly off the back of that board. Maggie's father, Wayne Rao, an accomplished player as well. We'll see him probably in, uh, in co-ed doubles with Maggie later on in the week. Lots of great action working up to Championship Saturday right there. And there's a couple uh, points saved, I think, right there Yeah. For, uh, for Maggie to be sure. So 11 on 7, 12 on 7. It could have been uh, much worse than that right there. So there's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a break for Maggie. But, um, yeah, that ability to tune out a bad frame or just even one bad bag is what so many of these top-level players have that, that so many don't. Yeah, there's some people that can just zone in and nothing affects them. It's pretty amazing mm -hmm. to watch those players. Now that bag probably, if somebody sneezes, is going in. That's moving every time mm -hmm. it hits the board. There it is. A little bit of cleanup. Now we'll see what they do with an open board, and that's typically what Amber does. And i got to expect that Maggie looks to match up the middle. Oh, oh. boy, she skips just around the right side of the hole. and. Drops her head and heads down and gets doubled up 14 on seven. Again, Maggie, the higher seed. She comes in as the number one seed for this particular player of the season event. 
We'll have juniors uh, coming up here in just a little while as well as our seniors bracket. And all of these, all of these are going to be great matches. And this one really has, has started out very quiet. There's, I mean, even the crowd is very quiet watching. There we go. She's given the middle. She takes the middle. And that's a, a very much part of the secret sauce of success. If somebody gives you the middle, take it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and, and something else, too, you know, when, when you play at the level that you play at, which is, you know, is here and maybe the, you know, some of these pros are maybe, you know, maybe a little more advanced, but you learn every time you play against one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I would tend to be <laughs> down here. Don't cut yourself short, toward though. My, toward my shoelaces <laughs> right down here. But when I play... I try to learn at least, I, I can't say, oh, I'm going to throw the airmail here. I can't do that. But I do know that if I aim right about the top of the shield that you're seeing there on the board mm -hmm. and try to run that up the middle, as long as I can do that and, and no one's defending against that because, I, you know, I, I feel like I understand what I'm supposed to be doing. But that is the very beginning of understanding how to play at this level. Big arm swing in two steps, puts one right in the front of the hole. Amber able to collect as she goes in. Maggie looks like she's got it dialed in a little bit. It's interesting, too. Amber, sometimes she looks like she's going to get that big arm swing, and then she just kind of stops. It, like, lightens up almost. Yeah, dead in her tracks. You know, I hear a lot of talk, too, here lately about the psychology of the game. It looks like they're going to – oh, there were points that uh, were not scored before the uh, end of the frame. Oh, okay. No, she's going down to straighten things out. And typically our official here on center court would be there to straighten out or collect the uh, errant dirty bag. But I do believe the cornhole dude is attending to other matters. My guess would probably be at the bar. Um, <laughs> but uh, – Maggie is just enough, just enough to, she's just not dialed in the way you normally would see her. But again, only down by three, mm -hmm. which is surprising based on the way that we've seen the two of them playing to this point. She's given her an opportunity here. Now, interesting, she does not step out. She knows she can come right to left and do that, but she also put that bag back in play for Amber, which, oh, oh. boy, and that's a, that's a huge mistake right there. She's going to come in from right to left. And, now, oh boy, just not doing herself any favors when she has the chance. Oh, look at that. Nice bag. That's a nice bag. And Maggie's walking down there. And, and you know, she might be singing, you know, Sound of Music in her head. I don't know what's going <laughs> on in there. She's so calm no matter what happens. But uh, she gives up the deuce right there. And, again, it's a best of three. So she's got her time to. To kind of sink in, but do you do a lot of stepping out and, and, and a lot of that, or do you just kind of trust your your arm motion when you're releasing the bag? Um, I think I started stepping out a lot more with my co-ed partner Tyler, and uh, he steps out a lot, so it's g given me the confidence to be able to step out and just depending on where the bag is, you have a better lane one way or the other, stepping either just a little bit or a lot. Mm -hmm. Because I've noticed that uh, Amber will do that. She'll step out two feet. Mm -hmm. Maggie won't stand. She'll just let her hand motion and her wrist and her arm do the work. And she doesn't uh, She doesn't really look for that lane. But I'm not going to argue with how many did I say? One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three, four women's championships this season. And uh, I guarantee you there are a couple of co-eds and a couple of doubles championships in there as well. But, um, you know, and it's interesting, too, if you look down through the course of season 17, Sioux City, Maggie Geiger, Hinkley, Maggie Geiger, Beloit, Maggie Geiger. Then very next week, Knoxville, Amber Fretwell, Car Carney, Maggie Geiger. And then it's, it switches. There's a flip-flop right there in January and February. And then it's Amber, Amber, Amber as you get Cedar Rapids, Mesquite, and Branson. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy to watch. But, again, that's when um, Maggie was playing for two. With, she uh, was. With Anna along for the ride. So, uh, Amber found her spot and she took it she's gonna go ahead and just be content to lay low i don't think that's what she wanted to do but it's not look like she wanted mistake. to block behind that instead mm -hmm. 
up and over. Oh, oh. and she shoots the airmail and misses uh, top left. And you can see, I mean, even just hitting right there where her bag ended up, back by the drink holder, it is it is an all or nothing kind of kind of atmosphere here on center court with these boards and the way that they're playing playing these bags. So uh, a game that's taken a lot longer, really, than I thought it was going to take to get the first one under our belt. But they are clearly kind of feeling the uh, game of the other out. One off the back to start is not where Amber wanted to be. Up 16 to 11. Maggie seems to be having much better uh, comfort level going this direction. Yeah, I throw with my left hand, so I'm probably more comfortable on the opposite side, playing on the inside, you know, with my left hand on the inside. But um, one day I had broken my hand and I went to a regional. I was just hanging out. I just wanted to go have a beer and, and talk to the guys while they were playing. And they're like, you want to play? I'm like, my hand is in a, I've got four pins in here and one pin down here. They go, oh my. throw with your other hand. I go, oh, thanks, because I know what that means. And I actually played better. Oh. I threw with my right hand, and I actually, because I didn't care, and I was just doing what I needed to do, and I played better. And, you know, we, just like that, we find ourselves tied at 16. And, again, I, how? Patience. Mm -hmm. Patience. And there hasn't been that one oh wow moment. To the positive yet we haven't seen that one shot that just mm -mm. blew everybody away and i think we will in the next game yeah, nice. we just haven't seen it yet mm -mm. that's the word that we're waiting for right all right so maggie's going to take the lead back she's going to put two up on the board she's going to take that uh first bag and i think she i don't think she's going to play a lot of defense i think she, right now she says all right as you said in the hole is in the hole that's where it needs to go and that's what they both seem to be doing right now mm -hmm. just going hole for hole Good crowd gathered around here watching this. Our women's player of the season, Amber Fretwell. Maggie Geiger fighting to be the player of the season in the women's division. The American Cornhole Organization thrilled to be here at the World Championships. The Branson Hilton Convention Center right here on the shores of Lake Tanacomo. That's a lake, by the way. That's not a river. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that up during every match because it blows, blows me away. But, yeah, that's not a river. It's a lake. Hmm. All right, now she's going to try to shoot that up and over because she's got, looks like she's, she's got three on the board right now. Maggie's got one in. Maggie's got one in. She's going to go low. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice push there, but it uh, left her a little bit exposed on the right-hand side, so Amber can come in. She can come in low, and oh, boy, she kind of came in low and hot, thinking she was going to maybe push a couple. One right one. off the fax, so that does it. All right, well, that's going to give Maggie Guy. Look at it. She is so excited. She's <laughs> just thrilled to be up uh, one to nothing. So now somebody will just have to, I guess, get down there and don't we need to reset? Yeah. So we're resetting the scoreboard there. So 21 points, very quietly put up there by Maggie Machine Gun Geiger. And it's interesting to have a nickname like Machine Gun when she may be the most even-tempered person I've ever met in, in my life. So, oh, goodness. So that's a, uh, a big finish there and, again, a best of three. So game two is underway. Both have found the middle. Both seem to be comfortable just playing offense right now oh boy and there is a uh, that one's short a dirty bag that was short enough to even move the board a good two inches now readjust that as they get back down there so my guest asked you to say get rid of that get that shot out of her head unfortunately i think it's stuck in there so there's one off the back one in the front one sitting on top and that right there might be enough to wear out Amber's thumb, posting the eight spot right out, out the chute in game two. But she has one under her belt, does Maggie, so this may be going to a rubber match. We shall see. That's the one thing we talk about, and, and you've probably played in a lot of matches like this, is it could be 18 to 1 and then 21 to 18, mm -hmm. just like that. And she's just that that seems to be where she's missing every time kind of up to the right do you do you find yourself getting into a zone where you you can't you're you're 
throwing with regularity, but even when it's the bad throws, they're all in the same place. Yeah, definitely a coupling in certain areas. All right, so now 8 nothing becomes 11 nothing very quickly. Now, okay, so you're walking down there. You're going to pick up your bags. You know you've got that first game under your belt. You know you had to come back to do it. Are you even thinking about that first game, or are you able to do what we talked about, and that's put it behind you and just dial in? I mean, it, it's hard to sometimes put it away, but, I mean, that's what you need to do, unfortunately, and just play it as it's the first game all over again. It's one and one. That's how I think about it. But that's easier said than done, though. Sure, <laughs> sure. All right, so very uh, – <laughs> And I almost did it. I almost had the announcer's jinx there. Very, uh, very well played by both. Just going to have expected the eight bagger, unfortunately, um, for Amber. She wasn't able to complete the, uh, complete the cycle there. So that's going to go ahead and allow Maggie to pick up a couple. And that's always nice to kind of get off of that, as I call it, the crack, the goose egg, because it does psychologically wear you out, I think, to, to walk back and forth and back and forth in front of that zero. You mm -hmm. want a crooked number at some point. Once you get on that scoreboard, it feels a lot easier. There you go. Now she's found that middle, and Amber has, for the most part, owned that middle most of the evening, but it's just at the wrong times she is finding herself giving up just enough points on any given frame to be a psychological advantage there. Maggie goes ahead and cleans that up. Amber will take the middle back. There's that eight-bagger we were talking about, you think? Oh, oh, see, I did may it. May jinx that again. My fault. For <laughs> both of them. All right, well, let's just say this. Eight bags were thrown. <laughs> we'll, we'll call it an eight-bagger from that standpoint. But you know what, again, um, could have been worse, could have been better. So you live to fight another frame. 11 to 2. Amber Fretwell, the number two seed against Maggie Geiger, the number one seed, coming into the women's player of the season playoff here the American Cornhole Organization World Championships of Cornhole. Branson, Missouri is where we call home for the entire week. We'll wrap things up with a championship Saturday here on American Cornhole Organization World Cornhole Day. Looking forward to having that. I don't know if uh, you're planning on seeing any shows or doing anything else while you're here. I know it's mostly competition, but there's lots to see. There is. There's. We drove down the main ship, and we were like, whoa. <laughs> see, <that's laughs> there's so much really, to do. Living in St. Louis that you hadn't been here before, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that you hadn't come down and seen this because it's yeah. two completely different worlds it, <laughs> that be right at the top of that hill. It really is. It's like we, oh, we just like mind blown. That's a big one right there, and that's going to turn, the, uh, turn the tide once again. But, yeah, back to that, uh, the amount of things that there are to do, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's almost a little bit overwhelming. We went and when we got in town and saw the Haygoods, which is the 30-year running family show of brothers, five brothers and a sister, everybody that works on the show is family. Uh, they've been great to work with. They, they put together a really nice welcome promo here for us to come into town. We went out to see them, and they're going to be here Saturday to sing the national anthem for us to get things started on our championship Saturday. Just really, really good people and very, very talented. And speaking of talent, push that one just a little bit out. Uh, did Maggie to keep it out of play for Amber. She's not even going to mess with it. She's just going to try to clean up the center, and she's going to give up another two, and here we are. And we're back at it. <laughs> here we are. Another close game. It wouldn't surprise me any other way, though. All right, so we're on day one. Obviously, this is a you know this is a playoff for a for a nice award to have, but it's not part of the direct competition that we normally you know are fighting for. Is part of the purse money or part of the you know the different jerseys or things like that? You'll she'll have the green jersey, whoever it is she is that wins. But you get a game like this, or you get you get caught up from behind twice to lose a match like that. How does that mess with your head the rest of the week? Hopefully not too much. I mean, because we have all week mm -hmm. to throw. So hopefully, no matter the outcome of this game, um, it doesn't put anybody in any different mind frame. Yep. Nicely done there. That's just going to uh, have them grab their weapons and <laughs> fire again. No, uh, no harm, no foul as you... 
mentioned earlier. So, okay, so you're this point, you know, you're 10 points or 11 points respectively away from the win. There's still no defense being played. Mm -mm. They're still just going hole for horse because it, it's, it's working. Yeah. Either both sides. Well, that might That's be a little bit. This is back and forth. But this is one where Maggie should be able Ooh. to. Oh, and I thought she would push through that and take it with her, but she's put herself in a nice position there. Amber says, all right, we'll bunch that up and see just how strong you are. Well, and I tell you, there really isn't either one of them. They're not pulling out, you know, those, like I said, those wow shots that I said in the last game. We haven't seen that yet. And I know Amber's got a great air mail. She's going to go ahead and allow those two to be added to the scoreboard there. So Maggie takes the lead back in another seesaw battle. And she clearly, again, can't hardly contain her enthusiasm. <laughs> and she heads back down with a 12 to 11 lead in that high seed blue lane. And I, I was mentioning earlier, I've heard a lot of talk about lately. It seems like people are, and there's one that wasn't meant to be played defensively. She did not seem happy with that, but she'll step out here and try to push through it and just take hers. But, yeah. It's going to just become a little bit of a dog pile up front. Oh, Amber comes up go. and over. Nice oh, nice shot. back. How about that? Great shot. She's able to pluck hers out from in between in the pinch and follow it in. So nicely done. And Maggie plays a little pinball there with hers and leaves that middle open. So that's going to be a nice pick up there for Amber. That was a really mm -hmm. good bag. Yeah, a little bit of applause, a smattering of applause of a crowd that seems to be either in awe, sunburned, or heat exhaustion. I'm not <laughs> quite sure which. But people talking about when, you, when you're standing there and your opponent is flipping the bag. Yeah. And you're catching that out of the corner of your eye. Is that a distraction? You know, what is it that it's, um, what, you know, what does that do to, I, to you psychologically? And people, some people have started complaining about it. Now, the reason I bring it up is where Amber stands, if she's standing there flipping a bag, that wouldn't normally bother anybody. But Mackie is a foot behind her or mm -hmm. a full step behind her. Oh, boy. Oh. Not a great time for a dirty bag when she had just gotten a little bit of momentum back. And, uh. She's going to probably just try to muscle through that left side, take two, and know she's going to have to take Maggie's with her. Well, Ooh. gets the wash on that one. And right now, and, oh, she, she does it. That's it very nicely done to not disturb anything else hanging there on the hole. And that's we're back to the seesaw. That's a five right there. All right, so 17 on 15. Uh, Maggie had taken that first game, came from behind to do so. It is a best of three, so we're just – probably a couple of rounds away from crowning either the winner of game two or our women's player of the season here in the ACO season 17 world championships of cornhole. Ooh, and there's a uh, the dead zone of that board. Yeah, it really did. It just hit and stuck. Boy, it it did. didn't bother Amber at all. No, it didn't. In fact, she touched that low block, which I'm sure was not intentional, but she touched it and still was able to hold the middle and get to the center. Now she seems like she's throwing with a little bit more anger and purpose. Well, that uh, bag had a little body English there from Maggie. She was like, whoa, with her right hand. Uh, she's coming up and over, and she's able to pour that one in. Amber says, all right, well, you all know right. what? I'll take those two. Thank you very much. And we're back on 17s. How often, I like, do you find yourself replaying games in your head when you get back to the hotel or whatever? <laughs> if only I, I, th I only say that because I have to watch the British Open, and I know I make a lot of references to golf, but there's a couple guys who go, if I just made that six-inch putt, I would have mm -hmm. been at least in a playoff. How many of those games do you replay? I Honestly, I think it's mainly fresh that first weekend after, like or that first week after. Uh -huh. You go back and you're like, well, I could have done this. Or you realize, hey, I didn't throw as bad as I thought I did. Right. I think you put more pressure on yourself, like, after you lose or win in a game. Well, I can honestly say I've never had that one thought, that particular, oh, there's a nice bag nice right bag. there. 
a uh, that thought where I didn't play as bad as I thought I would. I've never had that feeling. That's a nice <laughs> one there to gather up too. Amber did a nice job there leaving that bag, I guess, possibly in play if she gets the right spin on it, but she doesn't touch it. So that's going to put her on what is, I think, the most difficult. Some people think 20 is the most difficult number to get off of. I think 19. 19? I think it's 19. I think I 20, I would uh, say it probably you think be the it's hardest. More yeah, because you just need that one point. Oh, the first one and the last one are the hardest ones to get. There's mm -hmm. no there's no doubt about that, to be sure. And there are some people that play with different rules that you have to hit exactly on 21. You can't go over. But, uh, good God, we'd have to have the World Championships for a month if that were the case sometimes. Yeah. So the official rules and everything you need to know about the boards, the bags, the equipment, anything and everything about how to host a tournament. If you want to find a certified official from the ACO who's running tournaments near you and you want to join up, go to AmericanCornhole.com. We'll get you all hooked up with anything and everything you need. These two are, are playing as if they want the other one to win. Ooh. That's a nice bag, but I think this. she took herself out of the... Uh, Her bag is... Oh, it's... It's, it's in. Like, but, I mean, it's still hanging, but Maggie's got to go around... Or airmail. Oh, Ooh. and she doesn't. All right. Well, that's game two. That's going to do it. So now we're going to go to game three. And 21 17 is our final there. So this is going to take it as we expected to a game three. So Philip Barnett is going to come up and join us now at, uh, well, can we do that? Are we good with, to go with that, Oz? Can we add can we add our man back in here because he's chomping at the bit? <laughs> come on over here. Sc scoot on in here and let's I find out. I can slide out. over too if you want yeah, to. Yeah, come on, come on in this way, Philly. You come this way and uh, and we'll put uh, Oh no, okay, very good. Uh, uh, my big question right now, come on in tight here. Let's get let's get up here like a like a family and let's talk about this because I want to know why you're back so soon. <laughs> it didn't go so well. The first game did not go very well. <laughs> And now I'm going to be held up because of uh, Amber's husband. So. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Shane is a uh, – It's a, like we said, it's a family affair. We were talking about, you know, all the little ones, the whole Fretwell family, how they uh, how they are all in it to win it. And, uh, boy, we saw, we saw Maggie come back in game one to take game one. She came back and, oh, boy, Ooh. she came and looked like she was going to come back and take game two. And then Amber just uh, caught a little bit of fire there at the end. Now, this is the first lead. Correct me if I'm wrong, Philly. This is the first lead. Maggie's started a game with. Yes, correct. It is. Well, I'll tell you, is, how about the season 17 <laughs> women's player of the year coming down to the final game? Yeah. That's two out of three. Well, I'll tell you, we were talking about this, uh, you know, the different – people that play you know you have to hit exactly on 21 i said you know if we were trying to do that here we'd at the month we'd have to have a month-long <laughs> world championship but honestly if all of these games go like this and the seniors we could be here until the wee hours might the morning just to get through seniors so philly i hope uh, i hope you had enough caffeine <laughs> and uh, you're ready for this because it's going to be it could be a long long night because seniors nice. games go long anyway so yeah. <laughs> and these two women are firing away mm-hmm it's been very we, – we've we, and I say this because it's going to sound different than it's meant to be offensive. There hasn't been a lot of defense. That's what, no. I, that's what I mean to say. It's it's mostly get it in the hole and wait for the other one to make a little bit of a mistake. And right there, Maggie takes advantage, puts up another deuce, and uh, she will take that first bag. Let's see what she does with it. I'm going to guess, mm, I don't know, up the middle <laughs> end. Right in the middle, yeah. The middle it's just in. in the hole. Yeah. In the hole. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's pretty good it. calling that, man. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it, uh, i got to be honest with you. My, uh, my acumen just continues to sharpen. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been working with him, Philly. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to understand the point of this game. Oh, she gave Inches Amber up. a chance to get in there. She did, and Amber oh. does not take it. And, and this, that look right there on Amber's face, we've seen it every other frame. Since she started, there's nicely played off of her own bag, but uh, just tighten that bunch up a little bit there as well. Oh. That's going to cost her as well. Three up on top, and now we've seen the uh, roll reversal. She picks up the four spot, and this is exactly what we saw happen in reverse in the last mm. game. Ten to nothing, and against Maggie Geiger, that is like a mountain. What do you think, Philly? <laughs> I agree. If you yes. were playing her, well, and you're down ten to nothing, what is your strategy? <laughs> One bag at a time. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you can that's, do. That's exactly correct. 
See, I think at this point I would probably just throw all four of them and go to the bar. <laughs> I'd throw them all at one, all no, four at can't once. Give up. I yeah. can't do that one bag at a time. <laughs> you can't give up. That's definitely That's right. right. Never give up. Oh, we'll see. There we go. Because you might get lucky and have have them make a miss. I mean, at at this point, you never know. Oh, and that is not a good bag by Amber Fretwell. No. I'll tell you. And we've seen that repeatedly in these first two games, not able to take advantage of a mistake by the opponent. No, and, she's still uh, got a break, though. That's a, uh, that's a break, but it is a uh, – uh, oh, oh, there we go. There it goes. It just finally topples in there. So with one off of the back and uh, a couple sitting up, it's a single spot I mean, right she's there. on the board right now, so hey, that's, that's how the you, hardest thing. Hey, that's how you crawl back in it, one one penny at a time, as you always time. say, Finn. If you don't give up, don't make mistakes, and you can you can get back in this. Oh, there's no question, especially uh, with Amber, who I, I mentioned to you, that's I, I picked her to potentially be yeah. our first ever queen of cornhole, so I'm going to have to go out there and uh, – uh, Kind of check her uh, check her pulse after this is all <laughs> over. No matter what what happens, win or lose. Well, you know she's always going to say she's got the nerves going on. That's mm -hmm. for sure. She Every does. time I throw with it, that's all she says. Like, are you nervous? I'm like, well, yeah, you shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she shouldn't be as much, much as we see her over here. Let's see if Amber goes up right here. What do you think? Uh, she's got it. She's going to do it. She oh, did it. Over it's it. okay. She she's only one. thrown a couple air mills today out of the three games. Let's yeah, see. we haven't seen a lot of specialty shots. No. Mm -hmm. We really haven't. I was talking to somebody for this match. And Up and over. Hey. Oh, hey, you know what they that? told me? You know what they told me? I'm going to tell you what I was just thinking to say. That shot. Maggie did not have the best airmail in the game, uh -huh. and look what she does. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. I think that's the first one we've seen her. She, she had one that hit the back of the board and shot back past the uh, drink holder mm -hmm. going uh, left to right on your screen, but that one was perfectly dialed in. That was very nicely done. Yeah, almost dragged her other that's, one, too. Absolutely. Yeah. It sure did. And then, and then uh -oh. we've seen that happen. We've seen that happen twice. And that's a good bag by Amber right oh, there. Yeah. It is. Oh, oh. oh yes. nicely done. And we have noticed Maggie's had better luck going right to left versus left to right. Yeah, Knowing good. that luck is a relative term, that's right. but she's had a better seems to have a better a better feel for it right there. So there's a five spot that she gives back. So eleven on one becomes eleven on six, and and we've seen it all three of these games. No lead is safe. We've talked about it not just today, all season long. Eleven on six, and it's only a, a five point lead, and she just got five in that round. Yes, so. She did. Mm -hmm. It's very possible. We don't see it much on center court. No, we don't. But it can happen. Uh, and there's and another every, bag. Almost every time we talk about the fact that we don't see it, we do see it. Absolutely. So uh, there may be a day when some of these players that go back and watch these matches might suggest to Frank Gears that he hire two mimes <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to do these <laughs> broadcasts and shows. Keep oh, jinxing and us. Uh -huh. Look at this. This could be a four spot. She's going to go for the drag here. We she's, think got, really? yeah, she's got two possibly hanging yeah. if she's going to risk it. She just made one, so I don't, I don't think no. she is. now she's going to play safe. She did. She There's still a lot of game left. Gave up the uh, four there, and, uh, oh, man, <laughs> it's just it's, you just it's so great. You just don't know. You don't know. And this has been – it's funny because the, the mood of the crowd is completely emulating the mood on the court. Yeah. It, I, I mean, I feel like we're calling the masters mm -hmm. right now. That's true. We have you to know, be really quiet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Maggie jumps up 10 to nothing. All of a sudden, Amber finds her game. Mm -hmm. And she's not missing anything. Nicely blocked right there. All right. They're going to just build that little dog pile. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Not bad there. Oh, how about that, that shot right that there? That beautiful. Wow. wow. And what do you do? She just, she just took them all like nothing. She did. Oh, oh it, it got to mess, Amber. Mess <laughs> yes, Amber. it did. And this could be a seven spot for Maggie right here. Man. 
What a oh, oh, she took one of them in. And Amber, Amber's happy too. Yeah, yeah. she's. Yeah, thank you very much, and a polite applause from the crowd. Amber's fans saying thank you. Maggie's fans saying, "Well, very well done. Yeah, Nicely done." Man, what a shot Maggie hit right there. That, that push shot. She dragged two bags in with it. That was just sweet. like right, right in the hole. Yeah, and those bags she's playing are, are very fast. A lot of players tell, saying that out in the uh, main court out there. That's, and we've seen Amber. Saw Amber in the co-ed last year. Somebody make a great shot like that, and she did the exact same thing. Miss a bank off the board. Oh. So might might want to step back and take a breath. Oh. Get five, get back four. Mm, no. Yeah, nicely done. Taking the middle, and Amber says, oh, oh boy. And he, she gets a couple. You know, that bag had a different flight to it right it there. It almost yeah. looked like a wounded, yeah. wounded duck yeah. right there. Uh, yeah. yeah. It had a little bit of a flutter. It might have been a nervous bag, too, right there. So. Mm -hmm. But she's crawling back in. Right, straight back to business. They both seem to be having better fortune with the inside lane with the arm. Yeah. Those, those bags are flying fat. Oh, another chance for Maggie to move up another two. Yeah. Closer to that green jersey. Waste no time. Oop, dead there center. it is again. These girls don't smile. No, <laughs> they don't do. It. They don't do like you do, Philly. You're smiling back there when you miss a bag. I'm telling you, Philly, well, they don't smile. Philly, just... you look like you had a great game. What happened? I got beat twenty-one to nothing. It's all good. It's all good. I Who mean... beat you? Who beat you, Maggie? Oh my God, I thought she was crying. <laughs> oh, when you play like the top women in there, I mean, you can't be mad. I mean, no. Mm -mm. And these two have yet to crack a smile. No, even when they. <laughs> so it good is very, shots. very straight face. Absolutely. Very serious. And Amber really has to, she really can't make any more mistakes. Mm -mm. And at this point, uh, Sebastian Barger, who thought we were going to nicely done a bagger there, thought he was going to be already finished with the uh, playoff for the juniors player this season probably is in the other room right now throwing his arm completely yeah, he, out of socket. The kid never gets tired. He's been throwing for four <laughs> he, he straight hours. He was throwing hours. since I got here. <laughs> <laughs> we watched him over here for three hours or so. Now we will do our best to wrangle our winner, whoever it may be, here in game three of the women's player of the season championship match. Again, Amber Fretwell, the number two seed, coming in against Maggie Machine Gun Geiger out of Wisconsin, the number one seed. Maggie and Amber now tied at one game in this best of three. 18 on 12 right now is Maggie's advantage, and that replacement bag is going to provide a challenge for her, but. Oh, that was nice, bag. She did. Now, Amber can't go up and miss out off the board here. No, but she can come in up and over. Oh, oh great how about shot. that? How about wow. that? And that it changes is the, that momentum right there. That is the first shot like that we've seen in three games. Hey, let me tell you something. What's up? If that she goes off the bag. back without hitting That's that, it. that game is over. That's it. Man, I thought she was going to come in and try to yeah. drive it low and hard and at least knock her bag in and leave the other two sit. But that was guts. Uh, oh. That was gutsy, and now adrenaline might have caused, yeah. caused a little bit of a yank there. But that was a, that was the, really the first oh wow shot we've seen. Oh. Uh -oh. She gave it right back to her yeah, though. She did. All right, now it's a three bag game. This is where you just let it go and throw one bag at a time. Mm -hmm. And this is what we expect out of all these matches yeah, tonight. I know. I don't expect to get a lot of sleep tonight no. before we're back at it again tomorrow. Oh boy, and there's a uh, there's a bag she would love. I think as soon as she let that go, she wanted it back in her hand. Uh -huh. Oh. They're following the leader right now. Yeah, they are. Yeah, she liked that one so well. She just thought she'd put it in the same place. To no one's benefit. Oh, oh boy, how about that? And Maggie. how about maybe a little nerves kicking in yeah. on Maggie here? And that's, yeah. and that's on her inside arm too, where yeah. she's seen her best success. So that uh, 
That is definitely one I was not expecting to see. I thought she'd put that right down the middle and be happy to do so. What a great match we're starting off with. The first one of the night. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and all for the green jersey, all battling for that coveted green player of the season jersey. And what a great crowd we have gathered yeah, we out do. there. We too, really do. Man. this put her up on the 2-0 yeah. it does yes it does there all right so now we talked about this before you came up here that i said some people say 20 is the hardest number to get off of and i i think it's 19 but philly i think agrees with you that it is 20 i don't know what minutes. it is about 19 that we've seen so many people get hung up on absolutely i think you're just you're like right there you're like i'm almost there i can i can relax just a little bit but you really can't and it's that, like that hurts it's like when climbing that, that mountain and sliding down the rocks mm -hmm. There's a nice opening bag right there. Nice pressure by Maggie. Ms. Amber cannot make any mistakes. Mm -mm, not one. But she's got it in her now. I'm going to tell you, I've watched enough of her to play in it. She can, she can match her bag for bag. Mm -hmm. Oh, she definitely can. And Maggie's going to make her do it, mm -hmm. too. Yes, yeah, she is. And she does. Yeah. How about that? Nicely yeah. done. Nice yeah. well done. Absolutely. That's one wanting to win and one not wanting to lose. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. And that's what separates this level of play. Mm -hmm. from Absolutely. When you have to do it, you just do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like old hat. Mm -hmm. And Maggie just keeps the pressure on. It's still a gettable yeah. bag. It's not out of play. Well, and we've seen so many times something like that happen, and then the other Good. player help them out with yeah. it or do the exact same thing. But, yeah, that was an easy way to get cleaned up, and she did a nice job there. The bag. There we go again. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Yeah. There it is. Eight in a row for the ladies. And we may have just had a little smirk and a little smile from both of them yeah. right yeah. there. I think that was the that was the crack right there. But I think that's the first back to back eight bagger we've seen yeah. in three games as well. So it's an interesting time to finally get dialed in, but you know what? I'm sure you'll take it. Absolutely. And this is what we want to see. A nice close game. Nice mm -hmm. blocker bag right there. But this is one that coming in left or right, she's uh, been able to okay. do. That's going to be fine. Yeah. And flip the bag over to her slick side, I believe. Oh, yeah, it was nice. How about that? Yeah. See, Bam was going to try to slip in the left side there. Mm. She tries. Big push not, there not by a, Maggie. Is not she a bad coming? bag, though. Is she going to come in low and hard here? Try right to push that it. up the center? Yes, sir. Right into that green bag. Oh, oh boy. And, man, that really put Amber in a pickle right there. Yeah, she needs to take surprised if she doesn't go look at it. She definitely needs to go look at it. Yeah, I think she does. Because she has to get everything because Maggie's bags are going. Yeah. Well, this uh, I don't know. She might can shoot an AML. Oh, she's going low and hard to the. Oh, oh wow. and there it is. Do it. Well, right awesome there. Awesome games. Congratulations. Yes. Maggie Geiger out of Wisconsin, fresh off the birth of her daughter, Anna, who is, I'm sure, smiling ear to ear somewhere, and she'll be <laughs> laying amongst yet one more trophy. And I'm sure maybe they will swallow her in the green hey, jersey. Just think, Finn, when she gets older, they'll be watching this back, and me and you'll be on there. <laughs> That's right, absolutely. And Philly. One of these and days. Philly. And Philly Rainier, who kind <laughs> enough to join us for yeah. this. We're going to have Maggie come up here and join us. And let's uh, throw a let's throw a headset on her here. Let's uh, offer her your chair. Be a gentleman there, if you would, sir. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is the moment she's all been waiting for. We, uh, we, we we spoke a little bit last year about, you know, 
what was coming up and what the plan was for this season. But uh, come on in here, you guys. I, I want this to be a big group. Yeah. Big, <laughs> big group. Hug, Congratulations, Maggie. Uh, Maggie. So we haven't seen you in a minute. You've been well, busy. You've had a little uh, something, something going on. I do. I had a little girl eight weeks ago. That's it's unbelievable to me. Eight, eight weeks, and yeah. we were looking, and we were looking at the results over the course of the season. And I said, you know, Maggie started out bam, win, bam, win, bam, win, and then Amber wins the following major. Then you win, and then all of a sudden it's like, guess who had uh, something else to do <laughs> for a couple of weeks? And then Amber, 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 all the way down. So this was a dogfight sort of season <clears throat> in the women's division for you all year. We get out there and we watch you, and Philly talked about this too, you know, uh, getting down by six, seven, eight, sometimes a, what, 11 nothing was the, was the one that we saw um, that was the biggest deficit to overcome. And we thought you had it there in the second game. Did you think you had it? Because we couldn't read anything um, on your face. I didn't think I had it any of the games. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Oh, Amber is a very good competitor. It could have gone either way all the games. It was – she's good. Yep. All right. Well, let me ask you this. The green jersey, you have the player of the season green jersey. I do. Okay. That will be – will that be a, a, a nightgown for Anna? Will that be uh, – will she get to wear that first or will you be wearing it around? Well, she probably should. She's been my good luck charm this season, so. <laughs> she absolutely has. In fact, as we made mention, yeah, she made the cover of Whole Magazine. Did. I I was lobbying for it to be this cover right, right here, but I, I figured we probably should get your permission for that yeah. because that could uh, – Maybe be, next season. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I, these guys uh, – Philly was with me watching and, and calling all three games, and Philip was able to join in. For that final game, what was the where was the momentum changer? What did uh, what did you when did you feel like okay? And I know you're going to say never, but when did you really feel? Because was it you, Philly? You said I think they both smirked at the same time. We yeah. hadn't seen any mm -hmm. emotion. This last game, it was when I think you guys hit the two eight ba baggers back and forth, and then there was that just a little smirk, smirk there. Yeah. <laughs> did you feel like that was when? I mean, what was it? Where did it? Where was the turning point? If there was one. Um, the very last round, that was my it. very last bag, <laughs> when I set it up, that she would have had to make a miracle shot. <laughs> yeah, that was a great bag, too, by the way, to bunch them up like that. Yes, thank you. Nicely done. Well, I'll tell you what, I know you've got a big week ahead of you still, and uh, I know Wayne and, and uh, is here, and it's yeah. going to be so much fun still yet to come. I feel certain that we are probably going to see you here on center court again. Let's hope. And congratulations on everything that's happened to you. Thank you. This season 17. All right, thank Wisconsin you. zone. How about that? Maggie Machine Gun Geiger steps back from a crazy season 17, takes two out of three from Amber Fretwell, which very few people can say they've ever done as well. And she takes the women's player of the season green jersey. Congratulations. Thank you. All Congratulations. Right. We're going to take you. a break, and then we're going to watch the uh, seniors get underway here, and we're going to find out who our seniors player of the season is going to be here in just a moment, live from the Branson Convention Center here at the Hilton. I am Finn, the loudmouth for the ACO, and we will be back to call that match and all awesome. of that for you. We are going to take a quick break and be back on the ACO Digital Network. King 